Calvin Joyner is your your working man that has become complacent with his life. You're looking at a guy who at one point was the guy in high school, you know, uh, class president, most popular kid in class. You named it, he did it. And as an adult, things kind of went left somewhere along the lines and he found himself in a nine to five job pushing papers. Calvin's life starts to change the moment that he goes and meets Bob for drinks. Um, because seeing Bob and seeing what Bob has become, you know, kind of puts another foot on my back. You know, I see another guy who's done so much and who comes off as a guy who's achieved a lot. And I instantly just start to look at myself and reflect on what I haven't. And in doing that, Bob lures me into almost a trap of some sort, you know, to, to kind of to kind of get into his CIA world, him knowing my work background and what I'm capable of, getting me to hack into a system and then tying me up into something that I had no idea I was in and putting me in a position where I'm actually now a part of it. You know, uh, it, it, was all, it was all Bob's to do, but innocently in like a weird way. It's like it wasn't, but he's so naive that it was. This is a good change for Dwayne. You know, I don't think anybody has ever seen him like this. He really carries the comedy in this film, which is great, you know? And I'm, uh, I'm the straight man, which you haven't really seen me be in a film as well. So I think it was refreshing, and I think he did a good job of, of grounding the level of comedy that he, uh, that he went for. So I take my hat off to DJ in this one. This is good. I think their relationship evolves because as as the movie goes on, uh, Calvin starts to see that there is a level of innocence to Bob, you know, and in doing that, I build up a certain level of trust and kind of wanting to back him because I feel for him in a position that he's in, you know. And when you do do that and you make that decision, it's either all or nothing. And when I make the decision, I'm making it to basically give all and almost become his partner to some degree and just staying with him along this journey. So it's a, it's a good change and you know, that road to friendship that these two characters has is a, is a good road. It's a road that you follow. I love being physical, man. I love, I love uh, the action element in a film in general. You know, you, you're getting to do things that you can't do in real life, which is always fun. You know, jumping out of buildings, uh, car chases, gun shootouts, you know, all of those type of things are fun. And when you can add a comedic tone to it, it just, it just enhances it so much more. So I've been lucky enough to work with some great people and working with DJ is actually one of the biggest bonuses, man. He's a, he's a good guy. We play around a lot with Silly, but he's, he's one of the best to do it. And I think in this film, the camaraderie that we have definitely helps, you know, because being friends off screen, allows you to do more when you're on screen because we have that, that high level of comfort with one another. You know, Rawson is a, is a vet. Rawson has done a lot, you know? I mean, he's a, he's a guy who understands comedy and the story is told in a very smart way, you know? Because this isn't a genre of film that's brand new. It's been done, you know? You've seen the buddy cop, you've seen the guy that's in the CIA and the other guy that doesn't know. So when you do these things, you have to be unique and fresh in bringing this particular premise across. And I think Rawson was very good at that, you know? Also within the writing of the film, you know, I think it was very well done and, you know, it gave Dwayne and myself a lot of room to wiggle and, and play. You know, we could always go more and then scale back. And in this case, Rawson allowed us to do that.